Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the other day we took a look at the new Windows 10 game mode and found that the small performance difference was likely coincidental. Since then a few of you guys have contacted me regarding other game boosting software and one particular suggestion was the Razer Cortex option. Like Windows game mode it's free but works with any OS since Windows 7 and today we're going to see if this actually provided an FPS increase in games. So over on the interface we've added a few titles that we'll be trying out and when you click one to start you'll see the amount of processes that get disabled as well as the amount of RAM that's freed. There's also an option to defrag your game folder too which we will be doing just for our comparison results. It sounds very gimmicky but let's see. Those who say this works suggest that the more budget your PC, the better the performance increase. So we decided to use an AMD A10 7890K APU with onboard R7 graphics. Now this APU is capable of running games with lower settings and we've tested it out in the past, but it's definitely something that would benefit from a boost, so to speak, and I feel that it would be perfect in this situation. So let's get into a few games. We'll be testing a couple of benchmark runs as well as actual gameplay to give you a fair idea of what to expect in identical scenarios as well as real world performance. So first up it's Far Cry Primal and the in-game benchmark test. This test runs through the open wilderness of the game and the settings here are 1360 by 768 resolution with the low graphical quality to achieve an average of 32 with the game booster off. With it on, and our game folder defragged, we saw 34 frames per second, a difference that remains similar after 5 benchmark runs. At this point it's difficult to say if the difference here is the work of the game booster itself, so let's move on. Next up we try GTA 4, another game that features a benchmark test and it's more demanding than its successor 5. We actually set the game to 1080p here and chose medium settings to achieve 33 FPS over the course of our benchmark test, which we ran five times. What's interesting here is that we saw a similar result as before, with a 2-3 to three FPS increase, with the game managing 35. Don't get me wrong, it could very well be coincidence, but let's test out some real world gameplay next. We moved on to Fallout 4 and took a walk from Concord to Sanctuary a few times to gauge a somewhat accurate result. Although it is harder to repeat our actions and movements in real world gameplay, if the game booster made a significant difference then it should be noticeable. The game sat around 33 frames per second with 720p resolution and low settings with the game booster disabled. Now here's what's interesting, when we enabled it we didn't see much of a change in numbers but things felt a little smoother. That may just be the psychological implications of hoping for a difference but nonetheless it seemed a little better. Finally we put Watch Dogs 2 to the test again at 720p and low settings which didn't look too fantastic but we were rewarded with an almost constant 30 frames per second driving around this area here. I have to say though that here there was no difference and even boost couldn't eliminate some of Watch Dogs 2's annoying stutter. So does this software work? Well if you're just running gameplay benchmarks then I guess it helps a little bit but I think any differences to actual gameplay were lost to the slight changes in our actions. Having said that, this is a free software and I would definitely recommend trying it out for yourselves if you are waiting for that component upgrade to arrive, want to leave overclocking as a last resort or just have a budget system that struggles just a little bit. You never know, you might see more of a difference than I did. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for the constant support on this channel. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next video.